The objective of Ring Walk 3, which is under camera and clutching, teaches you how to use the ender wrist, manipulate the fourth arm, use the clutching tool, but more importantly, it's one of those tasks where your decisions affect your performance. In most exercises, you would primarily use the two working arms. This exercise has an extra third retracting arm, which we call the fourth arm. This is activated by the side foot pedal as shown here. On activating the fourth arm, arm number one on the right side freezes up. And now your master controls control arm number two and the third arm. You can toggle back and take control of arm number one again. The objective of this exercise is to move the ring along the tube. The fourth arm is needed to remove multiple obstacles that are within the ring's path. As mentioned in previous tasks, manipulating the ring with the tips of the instruments allows its rotation and smooth passage along the tube with minimal resistance. Planning comes into play in this part of the exercise. If you notice, the ring is to be transferred to the left arm as the right arm is about to collide with the fourth arm which needs to be moved. The fourth arm is then toggled in and used to remove the first obstacle in the ring's path. There are multiple techniques through which the fourth arm can elevate this flap of tissue, the most effective of which is scooping the flap of tissue upwards from its distal one-third. Care must be taken not to have the instrument out of view or use excessive force where the instrument turns red. With the fourth arm in place and the flap retracted, the first arm is then re-engaged. You'll notice here that I do not move my right arm, but continue to clutch while moving the camera to maintain the right arm in view prior to moving it. I then advance the ring over to the first obstacle. The trick here is to move close with the camera and then tilt the ring at 45 degrees while raising it above the obstacle and then handing it over to the right arm. In this next part of the task, I want you to realize how the endo wrist is engaged. This keeps the ring perpendicular and in the middle of the tube to avoid any collisions or slowing down. The camera moves slightly to the right during this part. In this next part, careful planning is essential. The ring is moved up close to the next obstacle. It is then handed over to the left arm. The right arm is cleared away to provide room for the fourth arm that is to be toggled in to retract the flap. Notice all three instruments remain in view at all times. You will notice here that I use the clutch when engaging the right arm. The reason for that is that the resting position of the right arm and the fourth arm are at different positions when they're toggled in as demonstrated here. And therefore you must clutch first prior to moving the fourth arm to align your instruments with your hands in the master control. As you will notice here, this also happens when engaging the right arm once again. To break this down once again, I move closer with the camera, tilt the ring at 45 degrees, raise it up slightly, and then hand it over to the right arm while releasing the left arm. The most important point in this next part of the task is to engage the enderist. You will notice the camera is moving along with the instruments that are maintaining the rings in the middle of the tube, and this happens by engaging the enderist at all times. Similar to other tasks, I demonstrate some of the mistakes and pitfalls trainees usually run into while doing this exercise. Usually most trainees start this exercise by taking the ring as high up as they can with their right arm. On doing so, they will usually collide with the fourth arm early on. After they realize that there's limited range of motion because of the fourth arm, the ring is then transferred over to the left arm, leaving the right arm low down. The ring is then advanced up and the obstacle removed. As I explained before, people usually try to grasp the flap of tissue and that leads to excessive instrument force. The most effective way of retracting this flap of tissue is scooping it upwards. You'll notice here that when toggling back to the right arm, 
I have failed to clutch and therefore my arm remains outstretched, I will correct that and clutch towards the end. Another common mistake is moving the arm before it comes into view. Here are some examples of some ineffective transfer of the ring across the obstacle. Tilt the ring to optimize its transfer across the obstacle and also try not to overreach your right arm across to the left side. It's the left arm that brings the ring to the right side. Here's an example where the ring gets snagged onto the tube. You avoid that by engaging the enderist and keeping the tube, the ring in the middle of the tube at all times. This is a good example of ineffective planning. I failed to transfer the ring over to the left arm prior to bringing in the fourth arm and therefore now my right arm is in the way of retracting the fourth arm. It is preferred not to hold anything with the arm that is being exchanged with the fourth arm because when it is re-engaged, the target usually slips out of the jaws. Here is an example where not using the tips of the instrument or keeping the tips aligned with the ring prevents you from manipulating the ring as best you can to clear it off the obstacle. This is a very common place where the collisions between the obstacle and the instruments occur. The trick here is to move everything in sync. If one arm or the camera are trailing behind, you will either have instruments out of view or you will not coordinate it fast enough. This is a good example of how to perfectly execute the exercise. You start off by holding the ring with the tips of your instrument, slide the ring as far up as you can with the right arm, not colliding with the fourth arm. You then transfer the ring over to the left arm, engage the fourth arm, move them both up along the ring. You may need to clutch here before scooping that flap of tissue. Then when it's stable and the fourth arm is in view, you then clutch, you then toggle the fourth arm, clutch, bring the camera back down. Now the trick is trying to keep that right instrument as close as you can. Again, the way that you manipulate across this obstacle is by tilting the ring and raising it up. Here, engaging the enderist and keeping the ring in the middle of the tube. Then, before engaging the fourth arm, transferring the ring to the left arm, clearing the right arm out of the way, then engaging the fourth arm, clutching first. This is a demonstration to show the different stagnant positions of the fourth and the first arm. You then retract the flab of tissue, engage the right arm, and it, which is always in view. This second obstacle is tighter than the first, so you must get the camera a bit closer, and also try to do some fine manipulation. Here everything moves in sync, the camera moves forward, the arms follow, engaging the enderists at all times. Good luck practicing.